Welcome to SVG TV News for Thursday, May 28, 2015. I'm Lafern Fraser with the details. The 2011 to 2012 population and housing census will be made accessible to Vincentian sometime after mid-June this year. Responding to a question in Parliament today about the status of the census and why the report is not yet completed and made available to the public, Prime Minister Dr. Alf Gonsal says the data processing was completed in 2014 and the report was submitted to the Director of Planning in November of last year. However, the Prime Minister explained that the Director of Planning is yet to complete the editorial work on the compiled data, hence the delay in submitting the document to Cabinet for the formal approval. In a note, she says that she would endeavor to complete her editing by the middle of June 2015, and uh, when that happens, the publication will then be done shortly after because the, the cabinet will just have to do a pro forma approval. I just want to say this, Mr. Speaker. You know, opposition politics, and by this I don't mean just the parliamentary opposition. Opposition politics generally in these small countries have taken a turn that wherever there is anything which has happened unfortunately, like for instance a fire, you can't take it simply as the report said, that it was caused by an electrical failure in relation to a fan which somebody had left on over the weekend, and it caused the fire. What it had to do, because we deliberately, that is to say the government set fire to the census, to that part of the building. That was said, you know. We set fire deliberately to said on the radio. The 2012 census had to be redone due to a fire which occurred at the administrative building, or specifically at the location which contained the information of the census. Responding to a question posed by Parliamentary Representative for the Northern Grenadines, Dr. Godwin Friday, for the government to indicate whether it still plans to build a learning resource center in the Northern Grenadines, Prime Minister Gonsalves says his government is committed to building community centers in all constituencies across the country. We intend to build the learning resource center in the Northern Grenadines as we have built learning resource centers across St. Vincent and the Grenadines when no other government in this history has done so. It was not listed to be built in 2015. I will ensure that it will be built by this government in 2016. I'm obliged. Fisher Folk Hare, who suffered damages during the passage of the 2013 trough system, can expect to benefit from grant assistance. Minister of Agriculture Soboto Caesar says there is no doubt that the farmers and fishers of St. Vincent and the Grenadines have great confidence in the government's program and policies directed at assistance. Caesar explained that grant assistance will be made available in due course and explains that the damage was estimated at approximately $223,000. Since this question was asked the last time in Parliament, Mr. Speaker, the sum of $1 million has been placed in a special envelope in the Farmer Support Company, and credit is made available to the fishers at 2% interest and the rigid ceiling of $20,000 has been removed. Mr. Speaker, I, we are working in the ministry with several friendly governments and organizations to ensure that we expedite the process, not of the payment when it comes to disasters, but of the assistance that will be made. And chronicling the history of the Fisherman Month of Activities, Chief Fisheries Officer Jennifer Crookshank Howard says the activities which began in 1976 may have changed the dates over the years, but has remained consistent in ensuring that fisher folk have an event in which they can be appreciated for their contribution to the industry. The initial competition was to give the fishing industry a much needed lift and accelerate the removal of some of the stigma usually associated with fishing and also bring social benefit to fishermen and their families. For 10 years, from 1976 to 1985, the celebrations were held on Easter Monday. From 1986 
to 2000, the event was celebrated on May Day or Labor Day. And from 1988 to 2003, a week of activities was celebrated. And from 2004 to today, one month of, act of activities. The Chief Fisheries Officer says she is pleased that women have also been making a contribution to the lucrative sector. In 1992, the first female fishing competition was held, and the Fishermen's Committee should be congratulated for organizing such a significant e event in the context of women playing an ever-increasing role in the development of the fishing industry. I'm proud of our women. The inclusion of women was demonstrated to women folks that the industry is not totally male-dominated and that women can play the additional role of harvester and not just marketing as was the traditional role. Miss Teresa Jack of Edinburgh also made history as the first special woman of the year with a total of 11 and a half pounds of fish which she landed. Government Senator Julian Francis, who is also the Minister of State in the Ministry of Transport, Works and Urban Development, says that Vincentians fail to realize the importance of properly maintaining their vehicles. Francis was speaking at yesterday's opening of the 7th Annual Road Safety Conference held at the Hotel Alexandrina under the theme Understanding the Issues. Francis said more and more vehicles that are on the roads are becoming technologically advanced, while the mechanics that are paid to service these vehicles are still using old tools tools and old methods. Francis says that vehicles don't just run off road for no reason. It's because persons fail to realize the severity of their vehicular mechanical problems encountered while on the roads. Accidents are costly. When that accident took place at Rock Bottom, when I got there the afternoon, there was one person who stood and said, well, they did a bill back all it would not happen. <laughs> But we have driven that road for umpteen years, and it's the first time that the vehicle ended up in the sea. There got to be something else beside the absence of a back wall that created that tragedy. Maintenance of vehicles is very important. We are getting modern day vehicles that have to be serviced by computers. <coughs> But our engineers and mechanics, our mechanical engineers and mechanics are not trained to service the cars with a the computer. There is still a predominance of hammer and chisel mechanics. <laughs> Everything is a hammer and chisel. If you can't turn the nut, use a hammer and chisel and break it. In an effort to upgrade its services to its customers, the St. Vincent Cooperative Bank launched its first automated teller machine yesterday at its main office in Kingstown. Network Administrator Martin Sheen says it was inevitable that the 70-year-old financial entity, also known as the Penny Bank, will go to the next level through technology. Sheen thanked customers for staying loyal to the bank and credits the staff and board for having the vision to install the machine, which can be used indoors as well as outdoors. This vision has finally materialized and to continue in our 70th anniversary, the ATM will go live on June 3rd, 2015. Our customers can now have access to their funds any time of the day, any day of the week at our bank and continue to have access at this Bank of St. Vincent and Grandines ATM. Our ATM machine can also be accessed by Bank of St. Vincent and Grandin's customers. Special thanks to the Board of Directors for their continuing support and leadership. To our manager, Mrs. Lavon Velox, a special thank you for your support and guidance. Finally, special thanks to St. Vincent Cooperative Bank Limited team. A job well done.
The police are investigating the circumstances surrounding the death of 38-year-old Cameron Primus. According to a police report, Primus, who is also known by the nickname .com, was met in a vehicle with a gunshot wound to his head at approximately 3.18 a.m. Primus's death is recorded as the eighth homicide for 2015. His brother, Roxel Miller, described him as a laid-back person who was in good spirits when last he saw him yesterday at the Mango Tree Bar at Arnest Vale, of which he was part owner. He's a cool, outgoing person. Never heard he was in any problem with any body or so. So we we don't know what take place. So we're just awaiting the police report and everything like that for we to say, you know exactly what happened. You know a lot of people will have their thoughts on it, but we just had to wait on the police for them to give us the okay. Well, this basically was the problem. Okay. So where were you when you heard about the situation? How did you take it? I was at home, you know. Um, I didn't take it too bad, you know, because I was out here yesterday afternoon with my two kids, and um, we, we, we chat, and then we left after six. So, you know, we were in good spirit, so it didn't really hit me like, you know, like that. Because uh, um, to see that I saw him yesterday, so, you know. If I didn't see him for a while, then it might have hit me harder than this. Miller says the death of his brother has not yet settled and that his family is coping as best as they could. I'm just holding on. I'm just holding on. Mm -hmm. And how are some of the other family members coping? Well, they, they're holding on too, especially his, his, his mother. She, she, she's okay. She's okay. So, we... We just gonna hold on and see, like I say, what the the police say and thing, and then we 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 gonna be good. Mm -hmm. How do you want your brother to be remembered? What he's, was he older or younger? He, he was my last brother of five, so um, can't can't really say right now yet. <laughs> you know how I want it to be remembered. So so. Anyone with information relating to Promise's death can contact the officer in charge at the CID, CRO, or MCU at telephone numbers 456-1810 or 457-1211, extensions 224, 225, and 226. Tevin Peters, a laborer originally from New Montrose, now residing at Longwall, will face the judge and jury at the next practical sitting of the criminal session at the High Court. This is a result of an order which was made by Chief Magistrate Rachel Brown Matthias at the Serious Offenses Court this morning at the conclusion of a preliminary inquiry on charges of aggregate, aggravated sorry, burglary, attempted murder, and taking conveyance of a motor vehicle on July 6, 2013. Peters is accused of breaking and entering the article collision and auto body supplies of Dennis Joyette, a businessman at Murray's Village. Reports are that it was during such time that Joyette was attacked and severely beaten about his body. His gun was stolen along with a large quantity of cash and jewelry. His vehicle was also stolen on the date in question. Carnival Beat is coming up next. Five young ladies will take the stage this Friday night in the Miss Osco Lime Phenomenal Pageant 2015. The contestants who are from the North Windward area spoke with SVG TV News earlier today on what persons can expect from them as they compete in swimwear, talent, evening wear, and interview. The small, 24 years old. I'm from Oya. I love going out, I love having fun, I love the beach. Um, tomorrow night, uh, May 29th, uh, I would like everybody to come and support myself along with four other beautiful contestants. Vibe for Miss Oscar Phenomenal 2K15. I'm 17 years old, cousin of mm -hmm. I'm from Fancy Party, love to have fun, love to read books. Mm -hmm. That's me. 
inviting each and every one of you to come to Oria on the 29th of May to support five beautiful young ladies as we vie for the prestigious title Miss Oscar Phenomenal 2015. See you there. I am 21 year old Aisha Lanson, Miss Courageous. I like party and going to the beach, most of all playing netball. I would like you to come on out on the 29th of May and support five beautiful young ladies. Come and see beauty, splendor, passion, and much more. I am Charissa Nero from Sandy Bay. Miss Ambitious, of course. Expect nothing but the best from Miss Ambitious. I'm Rina Lave. I'm 17 years old. Live in Sandy Bay. Dad dancing, singing, and most of all, interacting with pretty people like you. This weekend, the 29th, Friday, I want you guys to come over and witness five beautiful young ladies buy for the coveted title, Miss Oscar Phenomenal 2K15. Oscar's beauty show coordinator, Shafika Nanton, says the Miss Oscar Lime Phenomenal pageant will be something to remember. Oscar for the past three years. It's number four for us, and you know we've always delivered 110%. So on Friday, 8 p.m., we have five contestants, and they'll be vying for the title of Miss Osco Phenomenal 2K15. So it's a big community event. It's a big not win world event for everybody to be a part of. We choose this girl, these girls. Um, some people might say um, it seems as if it's a young mother show, but I would like to clarify something. We do have both young young mothers, and we have people who are. We have um, a contestant who's not a mother. But we decide to put everybody together because everybody deserves a chance to show themselves on stage. And I believe that each of these contestants, whether being a mother or not, they're capable and they have a dream to be part of pageantry and we're giving them a chance. So just come on out and you will see exactly why they are phenomenal, why they are driven, why they are courageous, why they are confident, why they are zealous on the 29th tomorrow. Tomorrow night, we'll also witness the first ever Oscar Soka Monarch competition featuring several young artists from the area. Public Relations Officer of Osco, Jade Bowens, explains more about what is in store for patrons. Yeah, well, after the closure, we have the ASCO International Soca Monarch, and trust me, you need to be there. Now, as to the Soca Monarch, we have six artists. They, they are all young artists from the um, North Windward constituency. Uh, what they are doing this year, they, they basically pick an artist they want, they want to be, and they perform just like an artist. They give the crowd how that artist will perform, they deliver like that artist, and that's how we're going to judge it this year. We have uh, Marshall Montano, we have Talpri, we have Problem Child, we have Fireman Hooper, we have uh, Destra, we have Destra. So ladies, you got to come on out and get loose, okay? For the past three years, Asko Oria Carnival have been one of the premier rural carnival. Uh, this year, it's no exception. We're, and this year we're actually delivering more. So if you notice, we have six, six premier shows packed into two days. Get your vitamins, is no rest, just peace. On Saturday morning, revelers will take to the streets of Olia for the Juve, and later in the afternoon, there will be a street jump up dubbed the Paint and Water Fet, followed by a river line. This is the fourth year the Olia Sports and Cultural Organization has been organizing carnival activities in Olia with an endorsement from the Carnival Development Corporation. 
In Carnival Beat, we continue to feature some of the artists who will be performing in Hits FM Island Network Inc. Soca Swing this Sunday, May 31st, at the Victoria Park. Keith Currency is among the lineup. He says his passion and creativity are what drives him to make hit music, and this year is no different. The Barley resident, who is known for songs such as Banana, Trample, Pat It, Piece of This, says his new songs for this year, Unbreakable and Drinks Up, will also give his fans the musical high they deserve. A lover of culture and the arts, Currency says he loves to partner with other creative persons to take soca music to the global stage. I grew up with the passion of music, I used to dance, do a little acting, doing, you know, so while I get older, older, I just captivated and just jump in at one time. Sometimes when you're alone, right, if you're in the mood, you something to be thinking to get a vibe and all that. But when you're on other writers, you build a vibe quickly and all, you know? Yeah. So everything just went smooth. Okay. Because, I mean, basically that's how most of the hit songs come about. When you are songwriting camp and like, you know, like that. The 28-year-old says he is appreciative of his fans and of Soka Swing, which he believes is a great avenue for local artists to showcase their talent. It's like, actually it's one of the biggest shows. Everybody just come off of Soka Swing. Yeah, for real. It's like one of them smart Soka Monarch. The only mean is not a competition. It will be real massive. Great. Everybody love it. Because it's Carnival. Kind of and you want to be home alone, seeing this on TV or hearing it on the radio. So make sure you be there, come out, vibe, bring a friend, and the really best one, as my girls say, we all are one. Soka Swing, 2K15. Don't care about the back and all, if I local or international, Soka Swing is what I love. Hey, yeah, currency.